I've played over 20 games with Rogue, and now I think I'm finally ready to talk about her. Hello and welcome to Nelson Oliver Cards. My name is Nelson and today we're taking a deep dive look and review into Rogue, one of the newest Marvel Champions heroes for the game. Now Rogue is complex. That's basically what I have figured out about Rogue. We will talk about it a lot, but it's she's an interesting and yet a very complicated hero to play. I like that, but it has taken me a while to grow and understand her. And so let, let's let's just kind of talk about it. Let's talk about her alter ego. On her alter ego side, Anna Marie does not have a lot to talk about. She has three recovery and really no benefits, no printed benefits. She has a setup ability to go get touched. But unless you're running any of like those really cool X-Men supports or need to heal, she really doesn't have a ton of reason to come down to alter ego. But that changes when you flip the card over into the hero side. She has a awesome 222 stat line. She has a really, really unique ability called Skin Contact. And this is where her entire kit evolves from. So Skin Contact says attached touch to a character, and then you get those traits until the end of the phase. Now touch is an upgrade that we will talk about here in a second, but let's talk about the traits. So this opens up just a huge variety of deck building options, and it allows you to dive into some of the tribes that we've already seen in Marvel Champions, right? You can play the X-Men, you can have touched on Avengers and play all the Avenger cards, you can play all the champions, the web warriors, and it, it, it hurts my brain. It really does. There's so many options for Rogue, which makes her such a unique character, but also like not unique because she does everything. I, never mind, uh, whatever. But anyways, let's talk about Touch. Touch says that whenever you attach Touch to the villain, you get Retaliate. If you attach it to an ally, you get Aerial. On Minion, you get Overkill. And then on a Hero, which we're not really diving into because this is a solo review, um, if, you if you touch another hero, then you get Stalwart, which is awesome, it's great. Really cool multiplayer setting. Solo, it's, it feels a little bad not being able to have that. But not only do you have the deck building that sprouts from being able to take the traits from those allies, you also have this ability that, you know, overkill or retaliate that just makes Rogue even crazier. It, it dimensionalizes her even more. And that makes her a lot of fun. Let's talk about her kit. The cards that she has are really cool and just like her ability, they're all pretty thinky because they kind of all revolve around the touch mechanic. So like the main four card and the main damage card, which is going rogue and Southern Cross, each have different effects based on what status condition she has. So like in solo, this for the most part is determined where her touched upgrade is. So the cards are really flexible and can really be like modified into whatever situation you need to fit them into. Like if you need to stun the villain and you have a Southern Crust, put touched on the villain and it's a once per phase ability. So you can't just move it all around and be crazy. You have to make that decision which can kind of lock you into something. And that's where the experience comes in. And playing Rogue more, you will grow as a Rogue player. And it's still something that I want to do. I feel like I'm not close to being a good Rogue player yet. But those events are very moldable and very flexible based on what you need. Energy Transfer is my favorite of her cards. So this is a two cost event that says you move touched to a character that is not rogue and deal them two damage, you get to heal too and you get to ready her and then you also get the traits of the new character. So it's a really great value assuming that you're touching like an enemy. If you're touching an ally, there are situations where you would want to do that. It's definitely not advisable, especially if you're gonna kill that ally, but there, if you move it to an enemy, you get to deal two damage, ready up rogue, heal two, that's a lot of bang for just two cost and I just, I really like the flexibility that it provides, especially once you have her jacket out. That says you get plus one thwart when touch is attached to a friendly character and plus one attack when it's attached to an enemy character. So if you have touched on a friendly character, you thwart for three, then you play energy transfer, move it over to an enemy, deal two, heal two, ready up, then you can attack for three with overkill because now it's on a minion. It, it's it's so cool. She's so combo-y. She is really, really unique. If that was not enough flexibility or enough, not enough brain burning, thinky decision making, 
We've got three copies of Superpower Adaptation, and this gets even more insane. So this allows you to go into your discard pile, or your teammates, again, if you're playing a multiplayer, and fish out an event that matches the, uh, like the aspect, basic aspect, or uh, if it's Gambit on the table, you can go pull out one of uh, Rogue's cards from her discard pile. This means that you can really easily build around specific events and continuously recur them, because you effectively have three more copies of that event in your discard pile. So this could be make the call. I've seen a lot of really cool decks and we'll talk about that when we do talk about leadership, about like running make the call to get the allies out that you need at that time. If you have touched on a, a blue ally, you can go get, make the call out of the discard pile. Uh, strength in numbers, drop kick, dive bomb, any of them, they're insane. There's the, the options are literally endless and that's, I think, I feel like I keep saying it, but maybe this is, I, I've played Rogue so much that it actually has broken my brain because I feel like I keep saying that this breaks my brain. <laughs> but anyways, it's a, it's, she's really interesting and there's just a lot of ways that you can deck build for her. Before we get into the different aspects, let's talk about some of the basic cards that she really likes. Death Focus is excellent for her. She has eight valid targets for Death Focus, so you're not gonna catch me running a deck without it. And then also because she can get the traits from whoever Tush is attached to, it makes all of those trait locked gray cards super good. So you wanna play Quinn Carrier? Throw a Tush on an Avenger. If you want go for champions, you got it. Throw it on Snow Guard or whoever you have sitting out there with that champion trait. And that just means that all those epic gray cards, all of them are open to her. And it really just depends on how you build and pilot your deck. Alrighty, let's rank the aspects. So the aspects are interesting and I still haven't figured them out. But based on my games and based on, I lean kind of heavily on the community on this one and just like discussion within the community. This is what I've kind of came up with and I'm, I'm pretty confident about my top and my bottom, um, but where those are in terms of power level to each other, I don't necessarily know. I usually say, you know, like this one has, you know, no synergy and it's not where you would never run this aspect with this hero because it just doesn't work or, you know, all of these are so good you can work with and build anywhere. I think it's kind of towards that ladder. I think you can build Rogue to be sufficient and proficient in pretty much any of these aspects. However, it may be a little bit harder than the others. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the fourth place, which is Justice. She's got a lot of thwarting already in her kit with the going rogues, a two thwart. If you have your jacket on a three, that's a three thwart. Readies, and so threat typically is not my issue when I'm playing rogue. And so Justice kind of piles onto that a little bit and what she's already good at. And so since she already has that, when I am running Justice, I like to run her in either a confused build and kind of lean into the X-Men supports, allowing her to go down, a confused build that kind of leans into using confused as a resource with scare tactics and swift retributions, or the pivotal moments when there is no threat on the main scheme, which she can pretty much handle all game and solo, then you get to deal damage. You basically get rewarded for doing what you're supposed to be good doing. But outside of that, there's not a huge amount of synergy, which is why Justice is in fourth. Moving on to third place, we have Aggression. Now Aggression, I think is my favorite way to play her. And I still haven't really made it work. That being like kind of another disclaimer, right? I still haven't made Aggression work with her. I do think that there is a build out there because when touches on a minion, her attacks get overkill. This means that all of her attacks, including her events, get overkill. So throw a hone technique on there where you get to add the cost of the card into the damage and let the overkill do the work. And so if you overkill an upper, or if you have an uppercut, that's now a three for eight. That's a swing web kick with overkill. So right there, it's already a little bit more efficient, assuming that you're paying with the correct kickers than some of hero cards that we've seen. Um, now, follow through is kind of the natural progression in this series, but from what I've seen, follow through is a little slow and solo, and I want it to work. I just typically die quicker than I can build it out. Rogue needs to build, and aggression doesn't always provide the tools that you need in order for you to set up, like the other couple do. Now, let's talk about the second place, and the reason being, is that her Southern Cross and Going Rogue abilities have additional benefits based on what she has going on. So protection is the only current way 
in solo to get multiple kickers off those events. So if you throw your touched on an ally, you get aerial, and then you have Dauntless, and you bump your health up to or above your maximum HP, your starting HP, you can retaliate one. So with all of that in play, that means your Southern Crosses are now dealing eight damage and stunning, and going rogues are removing five thwarting, or five thwart and confuse. So this can open up a lot of options. I like to run like Brother Voodoo, which can go search for those super uber effective and efficient cards now and kind of lean into that strategy. That's one way to go. The other thing that bumps protection up above the other two is now that we have so many readies in protection in the green aspect with like what doesn't kill me and ever vigilant ever vigilant is triggerable if touches on an ally then rogue can really kind of get those readies going and she can either be swinging for three damage if that touch is on a minion or a villain and then or be thwarting and so there's just a lot of flexibility that protection has to offer and so that's why it's in third but leadership is king here so the community has come up with some really cool decks that allow her to get all of these trait lock cards into play so leadership makes it easy to do that because you have cards like make the call and call for aid and cards that help you get the right allies on the table at the right time in order to play your trait locks because you take those traits, you can play, if you have beast on the table, you can throw tra you can throw touched on beast and get the genius and allow you to play ingenuity. And there's just so many of these cool combos that leadership unlocks basically easy mode to make sure that you have those cards in the right hand at the right time so you can get them onto the table. I highly suggest checking out two specific decks, Touching Me, Touching Blue from Journeyman 2, uh, and Sugar were going down swinging from Villain Theory just to see some of the incredible shenanigans she can get away with in leadership. Go play those decks, play them a couple of times. They are decks that you have to chew on a little bit in order to get the full potential out of, but once you kind of get it rolling and it kind of clicks for you, it's some of the more fun I've had in Marvel Champions. So that being said, check them out. The links are below. Go look at them because they're really cool. When looking at the community ranking, they had the same order that I had, but it's the first time where over 40% of the results were asking what the results were, which just is crazy to me. And it just kind of goes into showing you how complex and interesting she is. And it's, it's just kind of fun. I, I think that's a combination of her being new and also a combination of her being complicated and wanting to understand and see and not necessarily really knowing where that power level lies. The community for her power ranking had a mix of A and B tier, and I'm gonna put her in the B plus tier, but right behind Spider-Man. She is one of the most swinging characters, Web Warriors aside, and a bad deck will make her bad, and it takes a good deck in a good player's hands in order to really make her shine. And that's why, I'm having a little bit of difficulty placing her in this power ranking. I'm landing on a B plus just from my plays where I've taken her against Magnetos, I've taken her against Rhinos, I've taken her against Claws, I've taken her against a, pretty much anything. I've taken her through the entirety of Rise of Red Skull just to try and figure out and understand what she's doing. And I don't think that I'm able to play her to her full potential. She feels like someone that you will sit there and you could play rogue for a long, long time and be super satisfied in your champion's gameplay journey. She needs time to set up for a lot of her cool and powerful interactions. And a lot of that can just be foiled so easily by villains that come out swinging. Like Magneto, I have had the hardest time taking her against Magneto. And it's just because he comes out and he throws everything at you and she needs time to build and build and I feel like she can really struggle if she doesn't have a little bit of a grace period. Touched is a really interesting mechanic, but it feels like it kind of needs to be everywhere all at once. The most fun deck building comes when you're placing touched on your allies, getting their traits and able to fish for cards. And when touched is attached to an ally, it feels like you're missing out on like the status effects from her events. And also it feels so bad if touch is on an ally and you draw into bulletproof bell when touched isn't on the villain. That's like one of the worst feelings in champion so far. I, I hate that. Um, but so it feels like that will come with experience where touch needs to be at what time, but it does feel like she's kind of being pulled in multiple different directions, which 
means flexibility, but it, fe it feels like she struggles to find a lane sometimes. And I do think that will get better, but it can be a detriment when starting out playing her. That being said, she has an incredible future ahead of her. I can't wait to see what people come up with as the game expands to more traits and more abilities that she can feast on. She is going to be one of these heroes, and I feel like we've gotten a lot of heroes recently that I've said this about, where a lot of heroes that we've had in the past are kind of a snapshot and like maybe we'll get a card or two that will make them better, but like Gambit and Rogue both feed on new cards and they will be forever evolving as the game is continually expanding. And so with that, I'm excited to see where it goes and Rogue will be one of the cooler deck builds to check out. Anyways, thank you so very much for hanging out. It means a lot. I hope you are enjoying Rogue. I think I'm enjoying Rogue. That's kind of what I've come down to. I think I like her. Um, she hurts my head a lot, but she's really interesting. She has a lot of unique mechanics and I am very happy that we have her in the game now. If you like this type of content, I do a lot of LCG content. I do Marvel Champions, Lord of the Rings, and Arkham Horror. So if you are into all of that stuff, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. It goes a long way in helping me promote content. Awesome. Well, I will see you around. We do have a couple more Rogue and Gambit streams coming up. So I'm looking forward to that. But until then, go have some fun playing Champions. Peace.